So if you're wondering how it is that at the beginning of the night and the end of the night, my makeup looks the same. I look Instagram, perfect, ready, flawless airbrush photo, you know, perfect. This is the start of it. And I'm gonna be doing a full range tutorial so you guys can see my exact process start to finish so you can get the idea of how to have that perfect makeup that lasts for hours. As you guys can see, clearly things are different. They're changing. I'm fiddling with lighting. I'm fiddling with the camera. I'm fiddling with my background, which is obviously different because it's on a white background for once. So like for once, I'm not like flashing and flaring and changing. I am obviously changing this to accompany my skin tone a little bit better because as much as I love my black background, it was not suitable for me. Also, the way I'm setting up my studio now, I can do much better further angled shots so I can actually, you guys can see more of my body paint as I do things like that. So that's why all this change is going on right now. And I hope you guys stick around. Tell me what you guys like, tell me what you don't like, tell me what you guys think I should put up on my background here on the wall. Should I leave it blank white? What should I do? You guys tell me in the comment section down below. All right, you guys, this is gonna be the very first video into the makeup basics video tutorial selections that I'm gonna be doing for my channel. So before I jump into all these, all these tutorials are going to be more based on tips and tricks for performers. However, a lot of this stuff will apply to just normal everyday makeup. Uh, you don't have to do these things. I just recommend you do these things based on what my experience is as a makeup artist and as a performer. So these are just things that I'm recommending to you guys to do. Obviously, that does not mean you have to do them, okay? So even though I'm clearly just fresh out the shower, I never recommend that you take a shower prior to putting on makeup because when you are in the hot shower, it may all the hot steam and water and air will make your pores open up a lot and that will make you more oily, that will make you more porous, and so that will make your pores show up more as you apply the makeup. It'll also make the makeup set further into your pores and it will clog your pores and give you acne. And that's not what anybody wants, that's not what we're trying to do, and we're trying to avoid that. So if you are the kind of person where you take a shower before you put on your makeup and get ready for work or go to the gig, change that because that's probably what's giving you acne if you have an acne problem. So prior to doing makeup, always, I always, always, always wash my face. Now to know how to wash your face, you have to know if you have oily, dry, normal, or combination skin. So what these things are is if you have oily, obviously you have oily, more hydrated, moist skin. If you have dry skin, it means obviously your skin is more dry. We all know that. Normal means that based on the environment that you're in, your skin will either go oily or dry just based on environmental factors that are coming and going, interacting with you, and the products you use will affect how dry or oily or dewy your makeup looks throughout the day. So for combination skin, usually what that means is that in your T-zone, which is right here, this area right here, that you have more oily skin, and then right here and right here, you have more dry skin, and then usually with people with combination skin, right here in the center of the forehead, they have normal skin. So based on what your skin type is going to be, is going to be how you're going to be cleansing your face prior to putting on makeup. I use the Burt Bees Gentle Foaming Cleanser. Gosh, that was so hard to say. I don't know why that was so hard. It looks just like this. It is for normal to combination skin. It's great. There are different cleansers that you can get. I always recommend everybody to go and try out the Burt Bees line because it's worked really great for me and for everyone I've recommended it to, it works out great. They have cleansers for normal skin, combination skin. They have cleansers for oily and dry and just everything you can possibly imagine. And it's really, really great. And they have products for every single thing that you could possibly need. I'm very, 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 very sure that if you have a skin problem, the Burt Bees line has some form of a solution for it. So after you've washed your face, the next thing you're gonna do, which I always recommend to do with lukewarm or cold water, cold, and if you wash your skin with lukewarm water, always take a little bit of cold water and splash it on your face just to close your pores up before you go on to do your makeup. Now, 
The next thing I personally like to do before I do anything else, after I've cleansed my face and it's nice and dry and I'm ready for the, to move on, I like to take an anti-acne product of some sort. I actually use the Burke's Bees Herbal Complexion Stick. It looks just like this. It comes in a little box. And so what I like to do is I like to take that and I just run it all over my acne problem spots that potentially pop up that I've noticed in my life and on my face have popped up. Everybody has their own spots. Some people it's here, some people it's here, some people it's here, some people it's here. I personally have a problem with acne popping up all over my face. So I'm just gonna run this all over a lot of my, a lot of my problem spots real quick. So for me, the actual worst is actually in my eyebrows. And then after I apply that, I just take my hands and I just kind of spread it out across the face. This is like, I would say my number one anti-acne trick and why my skin looks so good is because of this particular product which I've been using for, I think almost pretty much like it came out and I saw it on the shelves and I grabbed it and I've been using it ever since. And I don't know how long that one, but it's been a long time. Now I don't recommend, this is a great product for people who have oily, normal, and combination skin, but I don't recommend people using this who have dry skin and on your dry spots if you have combination skin because this will dry you out like and you will end up with flaky dry spots under your makeup. So if you have dry skin or combination skin, avoid touching it to the dry spots. If you have combination skin, if you have dry skin, avoid it entirely. This is not the product for you. Which I finally hit the end of this. If you go and watch my Burt's Bees review that I did in October, I want to say, that's when I bought this and it is now almost June. And we're at the end of it finally, but this is actually the Bird's Bees Complete Nourishment Face Oil. This is really great for nourishing your face. Obviously you put oils on after tonics. I'm not using a tonic. I don't really use tonics very much personally because I have normal skin. However, for everyone else in the world, tonics usually do a really great thing if you have dry, oily, or combination skin. Tonics usually do a lot for you, but for someone with normal skin, tonics don't really do a lot for your skin, so I don't personally use them. Now for facial oils, these are actually really great for people who have dry skin, who have combination skin, and who have normal skin. I don't really recommend it for people who have oily skin. So I'm gonna be taking the very last bit of this product, and I literally just take like, it's literally like two drops out of the dropper, and I just dab it all around the face. So next I move on to my moisturizers, which is based on what you need. Everybody moisturizes, everybody should moisturize, but the moisturizer you pick is gonna be based on your skin needs. So make sure you're not picking something that's a super hydrating moisturizer if you have oily skin and don't pick something that's like has alcohol in it at all if you have dry skin. So that's just kind of what you're gonna do. You're gonna have to read the ingredients, you're gonna have to look at these types of things, and you're gonna have to look at them based on what the ingredients are and what type of skin they're made for. And that's how you're gonna decide your moisturizer. I have normal skin, so I actually like to use night creams for my entire face. I, a lot of people don't like to do that. That's just my personal preference, and that's what this is. This is the Burt's Bees. This is from the Burt's Bees Renewal line. It's actually a night cream, but I use it just as a regular moisturizer. I've also had this for a very long time, and it's lasted quite an amount of time. I just take one little like spread on the finger, just spread it between my two fingers, dab it on the forehead and all over the face, just like I did with the oil. It feels so good, it smells so good. It just smells really good. I like that one. Um, and so, then I do my eye moisturizers, which is just part of a moisturizing, uh, <laughs> which is part of a moisturizing plan that you do before makeup. Um, I have four under eye moisturizers, which are all from the Burt's Bees line, which a lot of these products prior to, like, prior to a lot of it I use is, more, is Burt's Bees. You do not have to use Burt's Bees. Like I said, you can use literally anything that works for you, works for your skin tone. Just make sure that when you're looking at the packaging and you're reading about it, that you are getting a product that matches your skin type, okay? I'm right now using the Burt's Bees Brightening. It's great for under eye spots I just like to stick it right underneath and then sometimes I'll take a second one and put it on top of the lid and just stick it like that right underneath and I just spread it around underneath just like that really easy and then the excess just goes right on the lid and now my skin is clean prepped moisturized and the last thing I do 
prior to my makeup, and the last thing you should do prior to your makeup is primer. Primer is not actually part of makeup, and it's not necessary for makeup, but I just personally prefer it. Now, I got, I got a beautiful bin of primers and stuff in here, and I always first things first things first things first, first primer I ever use. Uh, I go down with an anti-acne primer. This is by e.l.f. I like to go in with this and just use two pumps all over the face. I love anti-acne primers because they just cre they create a nice barrier between the skin and the makeup. And that is that is always 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 the first thing I do is I put on an anti acne primer. I like to go in after I put on that anti acne primer because it can be very drying. Remember, anti acne primers are supposed to prevent you from forming acne. They can be a little bit drying, so I like to take a setting spray. I'm gonna grab the Master Fix. This is by Maybelline. I'm just gonna give myself a quick spray. And then after this is when you're going to pick your, in the, your real makeup primer. So all of this has been leading up to picking my primer. This is exactly what I do every time I do my makeup. A lot of people think this is a lot of prep to do for makeup, but this is why when I put my makeup on and I go through the night, I don't crease, I don't crack, I don't start to flake, I don't discolor, I don't run, I do backflips across the room, I do splits. I am doing basically cardio in makeup and my makeup stays perfectly stayed. This is how and this is why. So after you do that, you're going to take basically whatever primer you need. If you have a pore problem, use a pore primer. If you have a wrinkling problem, use a mineral primer. If you have a dryness problem, use a hydrating primer. Whatever problem you have going on, that's the kind of primer you're going to choose. The only type of primer I don't recommend are tone adjusting primers, personally, because I don't think they really do anything. Some people really like them. Whatever, live your best life. But that's just not gonna be for me. I take the poreless primer, I just take like maybe like half a pump on it, and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna stick it right on the nose and under the eyes. And so into that basically part of the highlighting area because I just don't like any kind of pores showing up here. I do a little bit right into the sash area a little bit. After that, I'm going to take the mineral infused primer. I'm gonna take about another half pump of that, spread it around on the fingers, and I'm gonna stick one part here and a little bit here and here. And you're just gonna work it into the skin just like that. And then, now it's like that. And this is the parts where on my face where I tend to crease. So mineral and primers really do a great job of preventing that. And last, last, last thing I'm gonna do is once again go in with the setting spray. Um, I have all kinds, I'm just using the Master Fix right now. I'm just going to, this is how I clean my face, prep it, moisturize it, and prime it for the makeup and a lot of people say why do you do this why do you go through so much this is basically 20 minutes of prep just to put on my makeup and my makeup already takes so long it already takes usually you know two plus hours to do you know all of it and a lot of people say why do you spend so much time doing that well that's because when i put on my makeup you know i get done at let's say 7 p.m i need to look photo perfect until 3 a.m and i do and anybody who takes pictures of me from any angle at any time during the night will take a picture of me and I will look just as good as when I started stopped doing my makeup. So that's what I do. What I do is I don't want creasing. I don't want pilling. I don't want any of my makeup rubbing off. I don't want anything to happen. I don't want smudges. I don't want smears. I don't want anything to happen. And this is how you do it. All right, you guys, if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Did you learn anything from this video? Do you guys do any of this stuff in your own makeup routines prior to doing your makeup? Let me know in the comments. Make sure you guys share this video, and make sure you guys are hitting that notification bell right next to the subscribe button so you know every single time I upload. I upload every single week. So thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye.